Hello everyone, this is DA from eAcademy and in the previous video we have talked about what are the similarities and differences in the finite element method with the techniques that we have studied so far. For example, the similarity of finite element method steps with the direct method steps and the difference between the procedure with the weighted residual method, strong form or weak form. And throughout this method, finite element method, we will see how things that we have studied, how things that we have learned so far uh, will definitely come to play. So we'll start with, by digging into the steps of the finite element method and we will see how we are going to solve a differential equation or approximate a solution for the differential equation by going through one to and so on the steps of the finite element method. So in the very first step that is the discretization step of the finite element method. For example we have for example we have a fin here and this is the one end the displacement at this end that is u at zero is any constant value u naught let's suppose and this is the other end and let's suppose the heat is flowing from this end to the other end right so that would be the function of x because we are dealing in the one dimension area right now and this would be the other end where we have some let's suppose ambient temperature as well. If this is the problem then we can easily simplify this according to the mathematical by using mathematical idealization because if this is the problem so we can simply draw this thing as a line and we will see and we will say that u at zero is some value u naught and this fin has certain length for example as this fin has a certain length l so does this because this is the mathematical idealization of this temperature flow fin that we have here and because we are dealing with x uh, we are dealing in one dimension so this is the x-axis we have and at this end we have a rate of change of that displacement that is equal to some value let's suppose that is um, Q naught. So here we have Q naught. And this is the domain. Let's suppose this is the A, starting from A and ending at B. So our domain is from A to B. I'm writing 0. I should write U at A. So U at A is equal to U naught. And this is the mathematical idealization of uh, this. And we can also say that the f, f of x is distributed over this whole domain like this so why we are doing this because before actually doing the discretization of the domain we need to see how many elements actually we are gonna take and this is a very simple example of a fin and there there's no constraint initially I'm supposing no constraint here but in the problem, we may face constraints. And according to that constraint, we will see how many elements and how many nodes we have. So, the very first step in the discretization is to select the type of the element that you are going to use. Because here, I have selected the linear road as the mathematical idealization of this example. According to your case, you have to select either linear or quadratic or maybe a cubic as well so the first step is always to select the, the type of elements um, number of nodes geometrical position of each node with respect to the coordinate system and as we know that we are going to represent the element from a small e let's suppose we have to let me clear this So let's suppose we have n elements in this and so on to like this. 
zero. Let's suppose this is the x zero because this is the one dimension we have to deal in the x axis. And this is the xl, right? So this is because why xl? Because the length of the road, length of the fin that we have. So x1, x2, x3, and so on to. So that would be xn minus 1. That would be xn, this point. And this should not be xl, this should be xn plus 1 because we have n elements. Right? So if we have n elements, so this xn plus 1 should be equal to the length of the fin. We will represent each element with the ohm. Like this is the first element, so this is the first element representing by ohm 1, and this is the second element representing by ohm 2. And let's suppose we have the nth element here, so this is the nth element here. And we will find the, and how we can find the length, because the length can vary. It is not essential that the length of this element 1 and the second element should be the same. The length will vary. So how we can find the length of an element? This is obvious that we can find the length of the first element by x1 minus x0. And that is represented by h1. Because this is the length of the first element. So generally we can say that if we have, let's suppose here, eth element, let's suppose. So this would be x and this would be xe plus 1. So xe plus 1 minus xe should be he for the eth element. Or so what we have done here, we are we have a finite element mesh. We have discretized the fin. So we have a finite element mesh because we have finite number of elements in it. And that is why this is very important to know in which domain you are going to discretize or provide the information with the mesh and how many elements and nodes you are going to take in an element. So before going toward the second method of the, de of the derivation part, there is a need to see an important differential equation. And that important differential equation is of the form minus derivative with respect to the independent variable and I'm taking u here because I'm not going to change our dependent variable here we are taking the displacement and we will continue to take it further and c u minus f that is the force or the function is equal to zero where this x vary from 0 to the length of the road of the fin, whatever the geometry we have. So this is the very important differential equation that we will be using in this finite element method course because this is the general differential equation and this is very important and this is very versatile because by changing the values for a and c, these two and f obviously, these three constants and functions can easily be changed according to the situation. For example, if I am going to change A, then this equation will be going to define a problem in the structural bar, um, in the thermal problem, uh, the fluid flow, uh, cables, electrostatic, and, and many more. And this, this, this differential equation is very versatile in this category, and that is why Almost all of the finite element methods are using this differential equation, and this is very easy to understand. And the very important thing about this equation is that we learn how to solve these differential equation, the general form of the differential equation. We can solve any uh, differential equation specifically according to the problem that we have. So we will going to solve uh, or discuss these uh, differential equation and the boundary conditions in our every step of the finite element method in order to see uh, on what stage there's a need to change or specify a c and f and what is the importance of a c and f and we will discuss what is actually the meaning of a c and f in our 
uh, steps of the final dilemma method uh, consecutively and sequentially it says that at zero because we are taking the domain from zero to l at zero it is a certain constant and at the other end this point this thing uh, is equal to some other constant why this thing taken as this thing because you relate this thing with the weak form because description of that uh, weak form or uh, the other videos of the finite element method course will be in the description as well in the above card so we will meet in the next video with the second step derivation of the element level equations so this is for now looking for most of the videos and you can subscribe this channel in order to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye